So today we are replacing the brake pads uh, on my 2015 Outlander XT. Um, should be basically the same steps for, I think it's the 2012 or 2013 on up, um, the SSG2 chassis, whatever, you know, if you have any year range that's that chassis, it should be the same steps for an Outlander. I've gone ahead and jacked up the rear. Um, I highly recommend supporting it with stands. Uh, I don't have any stands with me right now, but um, we're gonna go ahead and remove the lug nuts now. Uh, as far as the Outlander goes, at least mine, you'll wanna check before you start, but mine only has uh, one set of brakes in the rear and it's on the right side. So we're gonna go ahead and only pull that wheel off. Uh, lug nuts are 17 millimeter. Freaking mouse, get out of here, what are you doing? You're a brave one. <laughs> um, also just, oh, there he is again. Right over to me, no fear. Um, got a new Milwaukee half inch cordless. Thing's awesome, I like it, lots of power. And the fourth setting here is cool. Once the nut breaks loose, it actually cuts power down and slows it down. So your nut doesn't go zinging or damage the threads. Watch this. Look at that, minty. One quick look and you can see why my brake pads are worn out at 40 hours. <laughs> There's nothing left uh, but the backing plates on these things. They're completely worn because of the mud. So I'm going to be replacing these with XMR pads. They're supposed to be more metallic-y and hold up a little bit better in the mud. Um, I will post links in the video description if you want the XMR pads or the normal pads if you want to purchase them online. All right, so at the bottom of the caliper, there's a little clip right here in the bottom pin, just for reference. We're right here. I'm gonna use a flathead. You could use a pliers or something. Just kind of pry out on it and wiggle it out. Don't lose that little puppy. Now you're gonna want to take a punch or something and put it in this hole and give it a couple good hits with a hammer. That's going to drive this pin out. And then we should be able to kind of flip the caliper up because there's actually no bolt here. This is just like a retainer pin. So once this swings out, we should be able to pull it off. There we go. So I totally lied. You do have to pull these two uh, 15 millimeter bolts out. There's one on top here. And uh, another one down there, this guy. Oh, we got one. All right, now should be able to wiggle this puppy off. <laughs> there they go. Get all that mud out of there. Let's see what we have. <laughs> metal on metal. Explains why my uh, brake lever goes to the handlebars every time. And there's a bunch of rin tin noise in the back when I'm going fast. Now, again, you want to double check what side your brakes are on. But in this case, since the caliper in the rear is on the right hand side, you're going to need two sets of right hand brakes and one set of left hand brakes. So make sure you pay attention to that when you're ordering. Don't order all three the same part number because I don't think they will work. Now I'm gonna use the same trick we use for car calipers. Um, I just reinstalled one of the old quote unquote pads over the uh, caliper pistons and I'm gonna use a C-clamp to push the caliper pistons back in. Uh, probably wouldn't be a bad idea to remove the reservoir cap, which is up here, held on with two Phillips screws. Just be careful, maybe put some rags around it because uh, when you push the pistons in, the fluid level should rise and it might overflow. And there we have it. Uh, the pistons are pushed back in. Now you definitely want to, if you have mud caked in here like me, you definitely want to take like a screwdriver or something and scrape out all the mud in here so your pads actually fit correctly. And so none of this crap breaks apart and uh, starts wearing out your pads instantly. All right, now if you had this little backing plate piece um, pulled off like I did to help clean it out, um, now you want to put it back in. It's just these this pin here. And then uh, there's another one you can barely see here built onto this plate. It just kind of comes in and out of the caliper. I can't do it with one hand, but I pushed it back into place and now we're ready to drop our inner pad in. Um, again, make sure you have the correct side 
So judging by how these ones came out, and you can see the little hole down here for that pin that we pounded out on the bottom. So this one is going to go in first. Obviously make sure the pad material is facing you so it's gonna contact the rotor. I'm gonna drop the top in first. Might have to give it a little persuasion here. There we go. Now you can kind of see this little retainer here. Um, that kind of goes like the full length of the caliper. So if you're having trouble and it seems like the pad's not sitting in there straight, um, kind of push down on the back side here. Uh, what I did was I just stuck like a flat head right here and twisted sideways and that kind of helped to seat the uh, inner pad. Now we'll feed the outer pad onto this little notch here, drop it down into place. And at this point, I'm gonna recommend um, putting that slider pin back in just to kind of keep everything held together because otherwise if you're gonna go, go to put this caliper on, um, the pad could maybe slip down. Maybe not, I'll try it first. Doesn't seem like it's gonna fall all the way out, but if you're having trouble with the pads falling out, maybe put this pin in first. So obviously our goal is to get this pad on the outside of the rotor with the friction material facing the rotor, the other pad on the other side of the rotor with the friction pad facing the rotor, and of course you want this plate, the caliper mounting bracket, to be between the rotor and uh, this bracket right here mounted the axle so we can thread our bolts in. Now if you're having trouble getting the bottom of the caliper on, there is a tiny little tab don't know if you can really see it here, but there's a little tab that's part of this bracket that wanted to give me a little bit of grief. Um, so I had to just kind of tap it on with a hammer. And uh, now we can put our two 15 millimeter bolts back in. These are them. Um, I don't have torque specs for these. I would say somewhere in like the 30 foot pound range, give or take. I wouldn't go any less than 20, that's for sure. They can definitely take 20 foot pounds and you don't want them coming loose, so. All right, now, probably not a bad idea to pop it in neutral, make sure everything spins okay. Nothing's binding. And then if everything seems good, um, I recommend squeezing your brake lever a little bit um, to squeeze the pads together, make sure they grab and that will also bring the fluid level back down a little bit so that we can move on to the others and uh, compress those pistons and there will be more room for more fluid to come up to the reservoir. So we're gonna go ahead and put this wheel back on now. Again, 17 millimeter. Now let's not forget to put our lower pin and cotter key back in. Um, this is the end with the hole here. So it's gonna go in pointy end towards the outside and it's going to be driven in from the inside to the outside obviously because this hole is too small for the pin to fit through. Now before pounding the pin in I recommend that you position the hole in a direction that you can actually slide the other pin into because once you start hammering it in or once it's in place you're not going to be able to very well turn that thing so I have the hole facing me so I know I'll be able to put the pin in. Go ahead and push the pin in. Of course, mine doesn't want to play ball. You too good for your home? There we go. Now, if you're gonna to torque your wheels, um, depending on what wheels you have, the torque spec varies between like 50 and 75 foot-pounds. Um, I've read of people on the forum saying that they snapped their lugs at 80, so I definitely don't recommend going that high. Um, if you don't have a torque wrench, just kind of snug them up. I recommend just, you know, making sure they're snug every time you use it. Uh, when I had wheel spacers on, I, you know, those obviously, that's a different scenario, but uh, wheel spacers, I had to um, tighten them up because it was starting to egg out my wheel. Um, for some reason, those ones were coming loose. So I would start at 50 or 60 uh, and go from there. Just use your better judgment. I'm just going to kind of zip them down with this. And we're done. Um, again, it's the same pads, just different part number for left to right. And it's the same caliper all the way around, even on the front. So I'm not gonna bother showing you how to do the fronts because they're gonna be the same as the rear, only possibly mirrored because they're facing different direction, but they're gonna be the same steps. 
Um, same tools you're going to be needing. So um, hopefully this video helped you out. If it did, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe and hit the bell for more videos like this and check me out on Facebook at Tony the Truck Guy. Thanks for watching.